Hi everyone, Samantha Devin. I've got Rachel right here, of course. We're on a dinner date. Uh, let's get to talking, right? So, story time, story time. Everybody loves story time. Um, this happens to be something that uh, happened after I went to the Kevin Sorbo's experience in Longview, Texas. Now, I don't live in Longview, Texas. I know a lot of people say I do. I don't. I live about two or three towns over in a bigger city. Now, despite all this, you know, I got a certain cab service that helps the mentally disabled travel to one city to another for these events, right? So that's what I did. You know, I really arranged a ride. They took me there. Now, obviously, after the event, I went to this little diner. As I was waiting for the cab to come get me, I said, hey, I'm going to be waiting at this diner. I'm going to get something to eat. How long is it going to take for you to get here? The driver said, oh, just give me about like 30 to 50 minutes. I'll be there. Like I'm currently like handling something with another person and like a town over. But uh, I should be there to pick you up in about uh, like a decent amount of time. I go, like, thank you so much. Uh, really appreciate it. So, like, I go sit at this diner. I'm literally sitting at the table. I made my order. Um, some guy walks in, right? He, he's in, like, a black, like, outfit, a vest, you know, like, white undershirt, black vest, tie, uh, black pants, like, uh, with a cross around his neck, like, Pope cross. He's got a Bible in his hand. He's got, like, this little, like, obviously, like, Amish Bible on, like, like kind of like preacher haircut, right? So I, I'm sitting there, and he walks over, and he sees me in my cosplay, because, like, I didn't have a change of clothes during this event. I really should have. Uh, that's my B, you know? But despite all this, like, I'm there waiting on my food. He looks at me, and he goes, like, oh, you're one of those frigates, aren't you? I go, uh, excuse me? He said, you heard me. You're, you're one of those uh, people that, like, that, um... A cartoon stuff from Japan. I go, um, you mean anime? He goes, cartoons from Japan. I go, or, um, I do. What's up? He says, you, you need God in your life. No? I can lead you the way. I can lead you the way to God. Right here and now. Mind if I sit here? I go, like, in my head, I'm really uncomfortable. I do not want to deal with this. I just had a good time at a convention. And I just wanted my meal to wait for my ride to come get me. I said, sir, sir, please respect my boundaries. Please respect my boundaries as a human being. There's a difference in the way I act online and then I act in the real world. This guy literally just like, oh. Thanks for the round's sake. So I was like, just let me sit here alone and wait for my food. And he said, no, you need God right here, right now, no matter what. That's what you need. That's what I'm going to give you. That's what you need to save your life from anime, a car cartoons. And I go like, Sir, sir, leave me alone. And then the manager of like the facility walks up, right? Like uh, of the uh, overall restaurant. He goes, um, is there a problem here? I go, yeah, this guy won't leave me alone. Okay, can you make him go away, please? Manager goes like, sir, you're making this guy very uncomfortable. Oh, please leave him alone. And like the guy, the guy in the preacher outfit goes, no, he needs God shoved down his throat. And I go like, I look at this guy, I go, in my fucking head. And like, I'm looking at this guy, I'm freaking the fuck out. And manager sees it. He goes like, yo, okay? I said, is this guy regular? He goes, no. He comes in here all the time, he finds young people, and he does this all the time. I go like, this is the norm? He goes for this guy, yes, get him out of here or I'm gonna have to call the cops. And guy goes like, cops are not gonna save you from sin. I go like, watching cartoons or anime is not sin. And plus, I'm not wearing an anime outfit. 
I was literally wearing a horrible Final Fantasy cosplay from Final Fantasy VIII. And, like, a really horrible one. Not my best work. And, like, I told him, um, just leave me alone. Manager, just get him out of here, please. And the guy looks at me and he says, no, you need God. Manager goes like, all right, you're out of here, buddy. I'm sick and tired of this. You know, obviously, you trying to force religion down people's those overall, like, livelihoods like this. It is not right. It's not how religion works. And he escorts the guy out of the building, right? But this wouldn't be the last of it. So I got my meal, you know. Oh, I'm waiting for the ride for another, like, ten minutes. And I sit down, and the manager comes up and says, Hey, uh, sorry about that. That guy's a real freak at times. Especially to, like, you know, young people like you. I said, I'm not even that young, but thank you for the compliment. <laughs> he, he ends up laughing. I said, is, is that guy just literally that messed up? And he goes, yeah. He really is that messed up. I go like, oh, wow. Oh, that's something. And he says, yeah, he comes in here every Saturday and Sunday. Stuff with just some random person. I said, is he even a preacher? He goes, no, he just wears the outfit to try to like force God upon people. I go like, so this guy's not even a freaking preacher. He's just some freaking psychopath. He goes, yeah. I said, that guy literally needs to be put in a mental institute. He said, yeah, but the police don't do anything about it. They just escort him off the property. I go, yeah. Um, he said, here, <laughs> free ice cream on the house for what he did. I go, oh, dude, thank you so much. I'd rather pay for it, though. He goes, like, no, no, no. Like, it's on the house. Of course. He, he ends up giving me, like, this, like, big, we're all, like, restaurant made ice cream mixed up with, like, Oreos in it. And I'm like, and M&M's, and I'm like, thank you so much. We're like, I end up eating it. And then, like, obviously, it was only, like, five minutes before, like, this driver's supposed to drive up. So, like, I go out there and wait, eating, and, like, no less than two minutes later, this freaking preacher comes back. Two minutes later, he goes, like, well, are you happy? You're going to be a sinner for the rest of your life. I go, like, sir, leave me the hell alone. I already found out you're not a preacher. You're a guy that poses as a preacher. And if anything, you keep this up, I'm literally gonna get the cops involved. I got friends in the police force. I used to live in this town, you know, years ago. I got friends in the police force. Don't even get me fucking started. He goes, cops can't save you from the devil. I go like. And here comes this police interceptor. Or he's like a guy in a police car, right? He closes the door. Or he get, walks up and he goes like, hey, how's it going? I go like, oh, you know, just some crazy psychopath trying to force something down my throat. What else is new with you, officer? He goes like, wait a minute, what the hell's going on here? I go like, yeah, this guy right here? He's not even a freaking preacher. According to the manager or of like restaurant, he goes like, "Oh, oh, I see what's going on here. Oh, I see what's going on here. All right, sir, sir." He ends up pulling up the handcuffs, and like the guy tries to like weasel his way out of it, but he didn't realize he couldn't weasel his way out of it. Officer put handcuffs behind him. Where he turns around, handcuffs him with the hands behind the back, and he said. This is not the first time you've done this. We warned you time and time again. I'm literally taking you in. And he starts crying, saying, God, God, boy, please save this poor person. Save me from these sinners. And like, I'm looking at this guy. I'm going like, wow. Wow, this guy's just falling apart because he's getting handcuffed. And the police officer put him in the cruiser. He said, I'm sorry. Like, we're going to keep him in night over in jail, and we're literally going to send him to, like, a doctor to get mentally evaluated. So sorry. And I said, to be honest, like, that weirds me the freak out, officer, but thank you so much for doing your job. And he said, no problem. He said, Ed, do you, you live in this town? I said, no, nah, I live a couple of towns over. And he goes, like, oh, oh, okay. Guessing you were here for, like, the Kevin Sorbo's experience, like, that anime convention. I go, yeah, the Comic-Con convention, like, it's rather small this year. He said, yeah, I 
heard about that. I'm so sorry. I go like, uh, you do what you, you can. So, officer ends up driving off with this guy in him, and less than a minute later, my cab driver shows up. And he picks me up, and he says, hey, how's it going? I said, oh, you know, average every day. He goes, want to talk about it? I go like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good, fam. Like, drive me home. So he ended up driving me back to my apartment uh, in another city. So, like, that, that was a whole thing, right? Uh, I'm going to admit, this whole experience freaked me the fuck out. There, there is a lot of sick psychopaths out there that you need to be careful of. Like, these people are everywhere, and I get what happened to Kip, right? Like, Kip talked about this, almost like the same thing, but mine was more like direct. Like, oh my god, in a restaurant, in a public place. Like, his was in a park. Mine was in a freaking restaurant, a small diner. Anyways, like, uh, uh, thank you so much for joining me for this, like, Lionheart story. Uh, you no, know, I'm Commander D. This has been Rachel. Uh, we're going to continue to eat our supper. And I will see y'all Friday for, like, Power World as Thursdays is days off. And I took a day off today to get some projects done. Uh, I just wanted to make this quick. All right, bye.